Hey guys, what's going on? Today, I'm taking you to an all-you-can-eat Japanese hot pot restaurant in Las Vegas. I hope you guys came with empty stomachs because we're going on a full-on feast. Let's go and check it out. This restaurant is called Swish Japanese Hot Pot. This location's been open for several years now, and it seems like they get pretty good reviews. It's open from noon to 9 p.m. every day, and it's located on 7875 West Sahara Avenue. It's in the Sahara Heart Plaza, and it seems like there's plenty of parking here. There's also a Vietnamese restaurant and a wine bar called the French Cellar in this plaza. Here's a look at their menu. They do have a lot of a la carte options if you don't want the all you can eat. They have sushi, bento boxes, and a variety of different appetizers to choose from. The all you can eat is $25.99. And add in $3.99 if you want the premium ribeye or the New York cuts of meat. And an additional $6 if you want sushi on top of that as well. And you can only get two appetizers. They have four different broths to choose from. I went with a Swish Special, which is a combination of the spicy miso and the sukiyaki broths. If you haven't been to a hot pot place before, it's a fun little way to eat where you have a boiling pot of soup in front of you and you can order many different slices of raw meats or other ingredients and you cook everything yourself. It's like an Asian fondue basically. And one of the best part of hot pots is all the different sauces you can dip your food into. The server just gave me a ponzu sauce and a gomidari sauce which is like a Japanese sesame sauce. The server even made me his own secret sauce here. They also have a rack here of different sauces, soy sauce, and chili sauce as well. Many hot pot places will have a self-serve sauce bar where you can mix and get your different sauces, but this place doesn't have that. Here's some scallions and minced garlic. The server told me to put this in the soup, but I think a lot of people mix this in with their sauces as well. So they start off by getting you a plate of vegetables. Looks like there's some strands of noodles in there as well. There's a few other hot pot plays around Vegas that has a self-serve vegetable and appetizer bar as well. We'll have to check those plays out in another time. Alrighty guys, let's start cooking. The vegetables take a little bit longer to cook, so I put them in first. The waiter told me that I didn't have to wait for the soup to boil first, I could just throw everything in at once. The only thing I don't like about this place is how far away the hot pot is to you. You really have to reach over the counter to get all the items into the pot. While that was cooking, my appetizers came. For my two appetizers, I ordered the shrimp tempura and the fried gyoza. Both of them look super crispy. The gyoza didn't have much meat in there, it was mostly just vegetables, but it still tasted great though. And it was a very thin slice of shrimp as well, it was mostly just batter. But I still really enjoyed eating the fried outer shell. Everything is sliced fresh here, and you can actually watch them slice the meats in front of you. The first plate of meat that I ordered was the premium ribeye and the New York steak. I had to pay an extra $3.99 for these.
The vegetables look like they're cooking nicely. Now let's put in some of the meats. The meat is thinly sliced, so it really doesn't take long to cook at all. I think everything's done cooking. Now it's time to eat. Look at all that meat, all for myself. Now let's try each of the different sauces with the meats. The secret sauce that the waiter made for me was sweet and savory and a little bit spicy. The ponzu sauce had a citrusy and a sweet and tangy flavor to it. And the sesame sauce tasted a lot like peanut butter actually. The meat was nice and tender and it tasted amazing with all the different sauces mixed together. Next time I'll ask for more noodles because I didn't get enough of that, but the veggies tasted great as well. This is a Japanese seasoning called Shichimi Togurashi, which contains dried chilies and different spices, if you want a bit of an extra kick. You can always ask to refill your soup if you're running low on it too. Next I ordered the chicken and the prime chut. Some people say not to order chicken at these type of places since chicken is so cheap and people want to get their money's worth, but I like to have a little bit of variety. The best thing at the end is the broth after all the meats and ingredients have been cooked in it. it makes the broth even more fatty and flavorful. I think I cooked the chicken a little bit too long since it was a little bit tough, but I was scared of getting salmonella. But the chicken still tasted really really good when you dipped it in the different sauces. I think the sesame sauce was my favorite one of them all. The prime chuck was definitely leaner than the ribeye that I ordered, but it's still pretty tender and it tasted great with all the sauces that I mixed with it. The dipping sauces is really the key to a good hot pot experience. And for dessert, they have a couple different ice cream flavors to choose from, and I went with strawberry. You can never go wrong with strawberry flavor. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed our video. If you want to see more Vegas videos, then give us a like, subscribe, or leave a comment down below. Tell us. What's your favorite hot pot restaurant in Las Vegas?